Hi, this is Becky with Icing on Top, Becky's Cakes, and today we're going to make blown sugar swan. Now, I made a recipe tutorial video on how to make the pulled sugar itself. So if you want to see that tutorial first to know how to even get to the pulled sugar point, you can do that. But we're going to start with the pulled sugar that we made in that tutorial, and we're going to roll it into a ball and make our swans from there. Now I get these uh, rubber gloves on first for a couple reasons. One, the sugar is very hot, and two, it helps keep the shine for the pulled sugar if my hands aren't constantly in it. And um, so I'm going to give it a couple more pulls here, make sure that the temperature is all even. And the reason I keep it under the warming lamp is to keep it soft enough that I can uh, work with it because otherwise it'll get too hard and then I won't be able to work with it. So I'm gonna cut off a little piece and set it to the side. And that piece I will use later for the wings and for the beak. And then I'll take the other part and cut it directly in half for my two swans. And I set the other piece back under the warming lamp so that it stays warm. And then I turn it periodically just so to keep it more even temperature. I'm gonna roll this into a tight little ball first and keep it warm. And then I'm gonna get my um, my sugar pump. It's a copper pipe at, at the base. And I'm just gonna heat it with my blowtorch so that I can stick it right into my swan. Now as you notice, there's little caramelized sugar on this and that helps to stick to your ball of sugar. And if you don't have caramelized sugar on it, you just put a little bit of sugar on the end, some of your pulled sugar, and just almost burn it so that it, you have some caramelized sugar for your ball to stick to. And I just squeeze it on the end, make sure that it's all sealed so that when I do my first pump of air, none of it will escape. So I give it one pump, and then I'll just let it rest a little bit. Let's mold some of it the way I want it to, and then I'm gonna give it another squeeze and see if the air starts to go in. And I only inserted it about a third of the way in. And then we're gonna squeeze it again, and you can see, yes, there's air that is getting in now, so that's exactly how we want it. None is escaping. I'm gonna slowly form my swan, it's going to start looking like a little bowling ball pin, really. <laughs> and then from there, we can stretch it out. But I add a little more air each time, then mold a little bit, and then add a little more air. Now, we don't want to overfill it too fast, because then one of the sides will get lopsided or something. And to keep it all even, you kind of just want to kind of mold it with your hands, pump, and then mold it a little more, and that'll just keep it even keep that copper pipe right in the middle there. It can kind of still wiggle around at this point because it's soft. So just make sure that it's toward the middle as much as possible. And then I bring my fan out so that it can begin the cooling process because as it cools, it hardens. And yes, we want it to harden as much as, as possible along this route. So that's why I introduced the fan here. You can do it without the fan, it just takes longer. So I just use this fan whenever I do a swan or something. And it's slowly stretching up the neck. Now, as, as I do this, it's getting harder each time, so you wanna be sure that you very slowly stretch it, otherwise it can snap off, and then you would have to start all over again. So I slowly stretch this up, and as you can kind of tell from the video, you're gonna the neck kind of sway down and that means it's still soft so that's good because we want it to be soft at this point because we're still working with it and we're still pumping the body too as we do this so you just kind of alternate between a pump and then mold and then pump and then you kind of get it to the shape that you want it to be once it's completely cooled off that's when we'll set it aside and work on the wings so still we got a little warmth here and it probably takes about 20 minutes for it to start to really harden here. So right now it's just workable.
And now I'm just going to use this little uh, silicone half spear ball tray. I'm just using it because it's something soft for me to set it in to cool it off. And it doesn't really mess with the swan shape because it's still a little soft. So before it's cool cooled completely, I just want to set it in something soft. So right now it's nice and hard. So I'm just going to leave it by the fan and I'm going to work on some wings. Oops. Now for the wings, I have this little uh, flower petal press, actually. It's silicone based. Um, you can just mold it with your hands if you don't have any kind of flower press or something, but I thought these looked like great swan wings. So I'm just putting it under my heat lamp after I have a piece of that and I'm pressing. And then after I press it down, cool it off, and then I'm gonna stick it in my spear so that when it cools and hardens, it's got a curl to it. And right now I'm gonna take my copper pipe out of my swan here. So I'm gonna heat the pipe itself, not the swan, just the pipe with the blowtorch. And since it's copper, the whole thing will heat up when you heat one part of it. And so we're just gonna make that nice and warm, and then we're gonna slowly pull that out of our swan. And there we go, there's the pull. You can see it's just soft right at the end of that swan there. And um, that's also gonna make a nice tail feather actually when we press it down after we pull this out. And we press it down just to seal it off and because we wanna smooth down the sugar there. So out it comes. I'm kind of twisting as I pull out. And then I'm gonna snip just a little piece that was soft on the end. Press it up with my hands and then smooth it on my silicone mat there. That makes a nice little tail feather in the back. And now the rest of my swan is still hard, so it's done. And we can work on putting the whole swan together and on our sugar base that we had poured sugar into before. It's You see it up in the corner with that yellow silicone um, noodle back there. That's what we just directly poured some sugar into when we had the hot sugar. So that's going to be our base. So we're going to get that, pull the noodle off and pick up the base. And we're going to place the base on our silicone mat over here. And that's what we're going to put our wands on. Now I'm going to grab my blow torch after I decide where to place my swan. So first, before I get that uh, heated up so that the sugar is sticky. I'm gonna see where I wanna put my swans and what part of my base I'm gonna have to heat. I'm gonna position them how I'm gonna want the final product to look. And then I'm just gonna heat that spot just lightly. If I heat it too much, it'll take forever to dry. So we're gonna, and also it might ruin the whole thing if you heat it too much but right now we just lightly heat this whole area that the swans are going to be sitting on and we don't want to heat the swans themselves because they're very fragile and that would pro they'd probably melt so we're just going to stick them right on those spots so they adhere to it it's the best way to glue sugar to sugar is just by adding a little bit of heat and then I'm going to grab a wing now these are more fragile, so I'm going to decide where I want to place it. And when I heat it, I'm going to be really careful because like I said, they're fragile. We're just going to heat the ends, but very lightly because they'll start to lose their shape if I uh, heat them too much. And I'm going to glue them right to where I want it to go. Then I'm going to grab all the other wings and add them one at a time here. I also have my fan on during this process so that it can cool the sugar again so it can dry as quickly as possible. Then I don't have to hold it in place for that much longer. And I just heated the ends of their little beaks. It doesn't take much for this small piece of sugar. And I just stick it right on there. Those are pretty easy to stick on. Alright, and now 
I'm gonna get my food safe paintbrush and some gel food coloring and get to work painting. Our swan's almost complete here. This is the fun part, I think. And our swans are done. And if you want to see how I did the cake, I'll be doing a tutorial of painting with buttercream to do this specific cake itself. But anyway, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully soon we'll be doing some pulled sugar roses. Those are also a lot of fun. Thanks for joining me.